Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us at such short notice. Uh, I wanted to be able to provide information on a situation that has emerged today. I've just come from an emergency management team meeting, the third that has occurred today, as we have waited for more information to come through from our contact tracing teams. The situation has been evolving throughout the day. Here is what we know so far. This morning, separate to results from yesterday, a guard, a security guard in his 20s who works as a hotel quarantine security guard uh, who has had his first COVID-19 vaccine has tested positive to COVID-19. This is case 1001. He and his housemates are being moved into hotel quarantine now. I'll step through what we know about case number 1001. He worked at the Pan Pacific Hotel on the 24th, 25th and 26th of April. Each day his daily saliva test results were negative. On the 24th of April, during this particular shift, new international arrivals were admitted into the hotel at about 4 p.m. That was on the 24th of April. We know from routine testing that two arrivals subsequently tested positive and were located in rooms on the same floor where this security guard was working. CCTV vision is being reviewed, however, there is no clear explanation at this point as to how this security guard could have been infected. It's possible transmission could have occurred while the international arrivals were admitted into hotel quarantine and possibly when transferred to their rooms. This is being investigated further. Case, one zero, sorry, case 1001 did not have any further shifts at the hotel over the next few days. On his first day off, Tuesday, April 27, is the day our health authorities expect he may have become infectious in the community. On this day, we understand he dropped friends off at their workplaces and went to a friend's house. On Wednesday the 28th, he, he went to Spudshed in Stirling, Northland Shopping Centre in Balcatta, and a Juice Cafe in Jundana, and then had contact with other friends that evening. On Thursday the 29th, he visited Coles at Northland Shopping Centre in Balcatta, and then met with friends later that day. We understand later that evening, he developed symptoms, which he thought were related to his COVID Pfizer vaccine. On Friday morning, that is yesterday, he visited a mosque in Mirabuka for about 30 minutes. He then went to a hotel quarantine facility for his weekly PCR test under the requirement we have in place for hotel quarantine workers. That test result came back this morning and was confirmed to be positive. Case 1001 lives at at a home in Nolamara. During this period, seven other people were living in this house, including two guests from Canberra. Late this morning, those seven people were tested and their results returned just after 1.30 p.m. today. Out of the seven other housemates, two have returned a positive result. The other five are so far negative. All of them, including case 1001, are being moved into hotel quarantine. One of the additional positive cases shared a room with case 1001. Health authorities expect this person became infectious on or about the 29th of April. The other positive case is a visitor from Canberra. Contact tracers have been working and continue to work through other potential close contacts. They are working as fast as they can to ensure we we can have anyone that was potentially exposed be put in self-isolation isolation, and tested as soon as possible. I ask everyone to cooperate with our contact tracing teams and follow the instructions. A list of potential exposure locations will be up on the wa.gov.au website shortly. As we know, the information is coming through as we speak, so the locations and times could change and more will be added over time. It's important that anyone who has been to an exposure location at the relevant time is tested immediately. 
We have done this before and we must do it again. What has helped enormously is that due to the interim restrictions we have had in place since Tuesday, uh, had, they have significantly reduced movement in the community and the fact everyone has been wearing masks. That gives us some confidence that the risk of transmission is significantly lower than it would normally be. These factors and the fact we have picked up these cases early means we can avoid moving into a lockdown at this point. But it is possible this could change by tomorrow or the day after. Our health authorities have asked for some more time today and overnight to do further contact tracing and get test results for other close contacts. Our restrictions in place, our use of masks and the ability of our contact tracers and testing gives us the ability to hold a decision on a lockdown decision, sorry, our restrictions in place, our use of masks and the ability of our contact tracers and testing gives us the ability to hold on a lockdown decision this afternoon. Our contact tracing team has been ramped up. Our testing clinics will also ramp up. Right now, we need to let our teams do their jobs and provide us with the information we need to make a decision tomorrow morning. But there is one change we will make immediately. As of midnight last night, we have had a relaxed mask wearing requirement for people outdoors. That is, people only need to wear masks outside when you cannot be physically distanced from someone else, in addition to being mandatory indoors. But due to this evolving situation, we will revert to our mask rules as they were yesterday, as an extra precaution. That means people in Perth and Peel and anyone from Perth and Peel in other regions of Western Australia must wear a mask inside and outside. Children 12 and under are exempt, as are other exempt people and when doing vigorous exercise outdoors. This is an extremely difficult situation we are dealing with. We're effectively in a holding pattern and I hope we can avoid going back into lockdown. But if we need to, based on health advice, then that is what we will do. As I've, as I've always said, we cannot accept community transmission of this virus. We must stamp it out. We must stop it in its tracks. So for the next 24 hours, I'm asking everyone to follow the rules and follow the health advice. We need everyone to do the right thing here. Wear your mask, use Safe WA, practice the COVID safe principles and get tested if unwell or you, if you have been to an exposure site. Please, I'm urging everyone to do the right thing. This is about protecting you, your family and our community. Are there any questions? When does the mask outside come back in? Is it from effectively from now or when? It comes into effect legally from six o'clock tonight, as soon as we can get the laws in place. Uh, but I just urge everyone to do it immediately. Have you managed to, have the police or authorities managed to have a chat to the, to the new case? Has he given any light on how he may have been exposed to it? Uh, our contact tracing teams have been working with him and uh, he's been very cooperative and giving us a large amount of advice as to who he's mixed with, where he has gone. And that's why we'll be able to uh, release the details. Uh, on all of the exposure sites that he has been to. Uh, and that will be very helpful. Uh, we don't know how he acquired the virus. Um, he uh, worked in hotel quarantine, he was wearing PPE. Uh, our initial review of the CCTV uh, footage has not shown any anomalies, so we don't know at this point in time. When did he have his vaccination? Uh, I think he got his vaccination about a week ago, uh, and that was his first shot. Um, so uh, he hasn't had his second shot yet, like most people, uh, but obviously uh, working in hotel quarantine, uh, it's an ongoing process because you don't have both shots at once. As you know, there's a gap between both. Has he been moved, have they been moved yet or is it in the process, is it happening now? What's the sort of time frame? I right? don't know. Has he gone yet? I think he's been moving. They, they, they've either been moved or are being moved as we speak. So uh, the eight uh, people who are living in the house in question are all going into hotel quarantine or have gone into hotel quarantine. Uh, but as, as soon as we found out, they're isolated in any event. Does it, make you make, does it make you feel even more nervous about you know, hotel quarantine, given what we've seen last week and, and now? Well, you know, it's the only option we have available to us. Uh, so we've put in place 
huge number of um, measures to make it as safe as we possibly can. Uh, but the virus itself uh, appears to be very, very difficult to stop. Um, but we're doing everything we can to stop it and make it as safe as we possibly can. So in the hotel in question, all the staff were, were wearing um, PPE. Uh, we had um, the no secondary employment rule in place. Uh, we have uh, vaccinations uh, being implemented for all staff. And uh, uh, as of uh, a week or so from now, it'll be mandatory for all staff. Um, we put in place CCTVs so we can monitor what's going on as well. Uh, and if anyone is identified as positive, uh, we put in place what's called HEPA filters in their rooms so that it purifies the air. Uh, we're doing everything we possibly can to try and keep people safe. Do any other restrictions need to change? People being out today, drinking, eating, there's 45,000 of football tomorrow. Do those need to be adjusted? Well, that's the thing. Um, I, at this point in time, what we're saying is everyone needs to wear a mask indoors and outdoors. Uh, we're going to see if um, any of the close contacts of these individuals turn out to be positive and then what their movements have been. Uh, and we'll be able to make a more informed decision uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, the thing about this case, as opposed to other cases historically, is this case or this person uh, became positive whilst we had huge number of restrictions in place across the community. Uh, and that means we have a higher degree of confidence a higher degree of confidence uh, that there hasn't been um, community spread of the virus. Uh, but we won't know that until such time as we ramp up our testing. The return travellers on that floor from there, um, that were positive, where have they come back from? Uh, the advice I have is one came from the United States and one came from Indonesia. And is there any um, notion yet that there were any variants or do you know what? COVID they had? Yes, I think one of the cases had a variant, a United States variant. Um, yeah, one was a normal B1 variant, the other one was a, a, a variant that's common in the US. A variant that's common in the US. Do you revisit the Rottnest Island idea now that we've had yet another leak from hotel quarantine? Uh, look, um, I think the best, most important thing we can do is drop the pressure on our hotels. Uh, and that's what we're doing. We're going to reduce the numbers coming in. Uh, and that won't be good for people overseas who want to come back to Australia, uh, but that's what we have to do. Uh, in terms of other options, we'll review other options, but whichever option you put in place, nothing is perfect. That's what this shows. Nothing is perfect. Um, as far as I can tell, all the precautions were in place, all the measures were in place, everything we could possibly do to prevent um, the spread of the virus was in place, yet it still happened. So uh, it is uh, something that uh, is obviously uh, very, very difficult to uh, have a perfectly secure system, whatever you do. Is anything changing at the pan pack with the two people who are on that floor? Are they going to stay in that hotel? Or no, the, the, the best thing to do is leave people in place. Once you move them, you start to make um, things more tricky and more dangerous. So the best thing we're doing, I think, is to leave those people in place. Have your contact tracing team said that uh, case one, one was using the safe WA app? Yes. Yeah, I'm advised that he was a very um, uh, responsible person uh, and so he was using uh, the Safe WA app and that's allowed us to uh, contact Trace. Uh, he's obviously getting tested every day. He went and had a PCR test on the scheduled day. Uh, he was wearing masks at all, the t at all times in question. So, uh, But unfortunately he was living in a house with uh, seven other people. So two of them have turned out to be positive. Uh, all of them became positive recently. We're obviously contact tracing uh, all of their um, movements as well, and all of them have gone into hotel quarantine or are going into hotel quarantine. Any indication yet that those two have been widespread going around the community? Uh, well, look, look, the tracing is going on, but it appears they haven't had huge amounts of movement. Um, I read out before uh, some of the movement of the what's called the index case, the first case. So he is the most concerning because he's been positive for longer. Um, but even in his case, it wasn't extensive. Um, and he was moving around the community at a time when everyone was wearing masks, when we had a 20 person limit in place at venues, when we had you know, cafes and restaurants only open for takeaway. Uh, so we had a much quieter society at the point in time that he was moving around, which gives us a lot greater confidence than if he was moving around in uh, normal times. Um, so in effect, um, it's, um, I wouldn't say we're lucky, uh, but I'd say it is um, 
probably a better time for someone to get um, positive in this way um, whilst those restrictions were in place uh, than in normal times. Um, the F word, Yeah. Well, at this point in time, at this point in time, uh, football is going ahead with 75% crowd. Uh, obviously, uh, we're doing uh, a huge amount of testing, and we're testing the close contacts uh, of uh, these people. Uh, if that changes, we'll let people know as soon as we can. And that would be in the morning. You yeah. urged fans last lockdown not to attend to the Wildcats and Force games, although crowds were permitted. Are you suggesting the same thing for tomorrow? Not yet. Uh, so tomorrow we'll make a final decision on that. Uh, but as you know, we made the announcement, days run together, but I think it was yesterday, um, or maybe, the, no, it was Thursday night. Um, Thursday night we made the announcement with uh, respect to the football, which is 75% and everyone wearing masks. Um, that currently stands, uh, but that could change, subject to whatever advice and the testing regime overnight. Do you know how many people were in that mosque? I mean, usually there can be hundreds. So well, the limit is 20. The limit was 20. That's what I'm saying. Because the restrictions were in place, uh, the limit was 20. And at the time he went there, um, obviously, I don't know how busy it was, um, but uh, it depends upon what day and what time you go to, the, to um, churches or mosques or uh, any other uh, religious uh, site, uh, there might be fewer or more people. Um, but that's something we're working out as we speak. That Pampak Hotel is listed as medium in that ventilation report. Will you look at, after this, maybe decommissioning that one as well? Or? Uh, well, we've, it, was, it was listed as medium. Um, I understand that the hotel itself doesn't agree with that. Um, but um, these were, and, and it, it, was, it was indicated it could be made safe with mitigation. So I went through all the mitigations we put in place. Daily testing, no secondary employment, uh, compulsory vaccinations, CCTV put in place, HEPA filters in positive rooms. We've done all those things uh, for our hotels. Uh, if we do decommission uh, any hotels um, that are deemed as medium uh, risk, uh, well, that would reduce the number of Australians returning through Perth very significantly. So uh, that would bring us down to um, a few hundred. Thank you very much.